Hello, EcoChain users. I'm Luc Hillige, environmental specialist at EcoChain. And uh, recently we've updated uh, the uh, software on uh, a few key points. And uh, today I wanted to explain uh, to you these updates that we've done and uh, show how they can be useful for you. So I will try and explain this um, updates that we did based uh, using an, an asphalt plant that we modeled in EcoChain. So an entire production uh, plant for the production of asphalt. Um, I'll start with uh, the results. And uh, actually the main thing that we've uh, enabled is uh, an easy scenario functionality to compare uh, improvement options. So based on um, the company page results, I'll just guide you through these updates. So what are we seeing here? So we are on the results page on the statistics on a company level. And here we have the ability now to compare a production year, for example, 2020 with a scenario. So now if you uh, select here, you can compare years to one another, but also you can compare your scenarios. So here you can, um, yeah, well, model improvements, for example, purchasing, um, yeah, a greener form of, of electricity, source different materials, or uh, reduce the transport amount, and uh, see what it actually does uh, as an improvement. So if we look at this uh, uh, graph re representation of our impact, we actually see the entire footprint of the asphalt plant. So on the left-hand side, we see the uh, figures for 2020, and on the right hand side, we see the figures for uh, scenario one. For example, here um, we have a scope three category one, purchase goods and services. In 2020, it's a little bit higher than in scenario one, uh, which is uh, significant, well, a little bit lower. Also, uh, we see an improvement here at um, scope three category 12, end of life treatment of sold products. And I will try and explain you um, what it, what, had, what has happened and what has been improved and how it can be uh, valuable for you too. So if we scroll down, we see uh, a list of um, yeah emissions that uh, are related to scopes. So scope one is direct emissions, scope two is indirect emissions, and scope three, for example, purchase goods and services. And this is quite an extensive list. So if you would like to reduce the list, you have the option to only um, show values that contribute more than 1%. So if I click here, yeah, then we see that um, the graphs get uh, downsized and it's more uh, pleasant to look at because you don't have an extensive list. So all the uh, contributions that are less than 1% are left out in this view. So what if we would compare 2020 the production year with scenario one? So here um, in 2020, we see a purchase amount of natural gas of 1.7 million cubes and the related impact indicated in environmental cost indicator. So what happens if you switch to green gas, for example? So um, hereby, you can see we don't use uh, natural gas in the scenario one, but we switch to green gas. You can actually see here that the yeah the transformation or the the result is that you have a 16% less impact by switching to green gas in this example. So what happens if we look at uh, the purchase goods and services. Well, you can make asphalt mixtures that use less primary sand, for example. And here you see the total amount of sand that was used in the production. And what if you would improve your uh, asphalt mixtures and use less sand that is uh, primary sourced? Well, in this example, we see a reduction by using less primary sand of 2.85%. You can have the same um, thing 
happening if you would uh, reduce the amount of bitumen that is used in um, asphalt mixtures as well. So here we see that uh, 4.2 million kilograms of bitumen have been added to uh, the several uh, asphalt mixtures. And what if you would reduce that amount to, for example, in total, 3.7. So if you would improve the mixtures of your asphalt using less bitumen, uh, you can easily save a total impact, for example, in, in this case, of 35%. So this is what um, uh, the scope and on a company level, the comparison could look like. And we've also updated a um, similar feature on the scope page. So on the scope page, here we see a graphical representation of your impact according to the greenhouse gas scopes. So here we have the first pie chart. We can also select, instead of the environmental cost indicator, for example, global warming potential. You see that EcoChain calculates it automatically for both scenarios and the uh, percentages per scope differ. So this figure is also expressed in a table. And what is good to know is that in this figure, the downstream emissions are not included. If we scroll down here, we have a more extensive uh, overview. So the known donut diagrams um, of EcoChain have been included here. And here we have the option to select scope one and two, scope three upstream, and scope three downstream. Now that we see that the values change for both scenarios. So if we would look only at scope one and two and scope three upstream, we see that the figures here in the donut diagrams are uh, exactly the same as the above pie charts. So uh, just to wrap up, we've updated um, EcoChain and it uh, allows to compare uh, your production year with scenarios or with other years based on the company level and on the scope level. And we have different graphical representations to look at your scope one, two, and three emissions. So that's the output side of EcoChain, but also on the input side, we've changed several aspects. So, for example, on the purchasing page, the purchasing page. So the purchasing page has also been updated. So the most important thing that uh, has been done is that you can now with checkboxes select materials and references and then delete selected. So again, <clears throat> You can, with checkboxes, select items, for example, the material or the reference, and then delete the selected. Instead of deleting all materials or all suppliers, you can just choose what you want to delete. Additional updates have also been made on a different page, which is the product page. So on the product page, Hereby you can see your products. And also here we have enabled to delete selected items instead of deleting all. And uh, it automatically sorts your products alphabetically, which uh, formerly wasn't the case. So if you would add a new material, it could randomly uh, yeah, be viewed in, the, in this overview of your products. And sometimes this just gave some confusion so now it's uh, sorted alphabetically automatically. And then I think the biggest update we've done uh, is really more on the background. And uh, I'll try to explain that uh, in, in detail. So um, as most of you know, we have uh, had an update in uh, the world of LCA. 
and uh, a big update has been made uh, which standard have to be used. So uh, currently in EcoChain, we now have the options if you go to settings and then go to um, calculation method. To select the SPK Bepanix methode, the Dutch new standard, the environmental footprint method, version 3, and EN15804 plus A2 2019. So if you go to settings and calculation method, then you get to select the LCA standard to be used, and you can change this into the environmental footprint method, EN 15804 plus A2 2019, or the SPK Bepanix method. And uh, this has an influence on the results that are viewed um, according to the standards. So I will uh, briefly dive into EN 15804 A2 and uh, show you the results if we look at that standard. So if you save the standard and then change your view to the product overview, now we can see that we can look into climate change on several indicators. So we can choose climate change and then look at fossil uh, or Biogenic. And we also have the different indicators, for example, the influence of land use change. So these are all indi indicators or impact categories uh, related to the EN15804 2019. And which was also uh, mentioned in our newsletter. We also have the ability to look at the full life cycle. So if we click here, instead of showing credit to gate results, we can also click on full life cycle. And here we see that you can also have negative values in the bar charts. And this allows you to compare, for example, a use scenario and uh, yeah, module D. So the benefits uh, of reusing, recovering and uh, recycling and uh, have that included in your figures as well. So um, a big updates in EcoChain, mainly in the background uh, related to the databases, uh, the norms and standards that can be uh, used. And we have uh, added the feature of uh, comparing scenarios according to the greenhouse ga gas protocol. Um, I hope you find this uh, updates uh, relevant for your uh, calculations of uh, environmental footprints. And uh, if you have any improvement uh, options, just let us know, and we'll take that into consideration in the further development of EcoChain. Thanks for listening, and uh, good luck.